Hello, this is Daedalus with Nerds and Stuff, and today we'll be painting these incredibly clear Reaper clear bones. Actually, we're going to be painting these clear bones, the ones we can actually see. But we'll be taking them from this to this and this. Before we get started, I just want to take a moment to thank some of our awesome Patreon backers. Emma Baird. Thank you. Junior Zamora. Thank you. J. Patrick Walker. Thanks a lot. Jenny Ottaway. Thank you, Jenny. Justin Briscoe. Thanks, Justin. Kathy Pretzer. Thank you. Daniel Sheldon. Thank you. Kelly Baker. Thanks a lot, Kelly. McKenna Bailey. Thank you, McKenna. Stephen Dewey. Thanks a lot, Stephen. And Sean Putnam. Thank you very much. And I also need to make a little announcement. When I recorded the audio for this particular video, I was doing a behind-the-scenes video, which you can watch here. I'll have Martin throw up a card. But as a result, some of the, uh, the music that was playing bled through into some of the recordings. Now, I could have gone back through and re-recorded everything, but I wanted it to stay as true to the behind-the-scenes video as we did. So we've elected to leave it so that uh, you guys get the full experience. You get to see... My struggles in the behind the scenes video come through in the, uh, the final product. And if you're not interested in seeing that, I hope it's not too distracting. Enjoy. Let's get started. So these Reaper clear bones actually have an incredible amount of detail on them. Um, I really like the Reaper bones models. They're, I like them. Um, they're not as precise as like a Games Workshop piece or a lot of other models out there that are like cast in pewter or resin, but they're cheap. So you can get a whole bunch of them and, you know, still be able to eat at the end of the day. They're really great for, like, uh, D&D models, too, you know, working on, like, your, uh, your RPGs. Because players that don't typically buy unpainted models or paint models or whatever can buy something that's cheap and they can actually learn on it. That's what I love the Reaper Bones models for, for learning. They're what I started on. They're what I like. So we want to just primarily pull out the detail in these models. It's a clear model, so we don't want to actually paint it, because then you have to paint like the inverse of what you're doing, so when you look through it, it gets to be a mess. And if you're going to paint a clear model, you might as well just start with a normal bone. So all I'm doing is just taking a thin down wash, and this one is actually just thin down Drakenoff Nightshade. And we're just gonna work it into the recesses and tint the clear a little bit. It'll, it won't be as clear as it was before, but what you will be able to do is see the detail. So it still looks kind of translucent and like this magical darkness sort of glowing over it, but you can also see some of that detail that they sculpted in. So that's what I'm after. You can do this with inks as well. I don't have any ink washes. Um, I don't actually know if the Games Workshop washes are ink washes. It wouldn't surprise me if they are, um, because they are good quality and they tend to move like an ink. I just haven't gotten around to buying some inks and making some of my own. There's great tutorials out there for making your own ink washes, though. Um, but it's just not my style. You know, I like the, the stuff that comes in the pots, the paints. So that's pretty much it for the painting process. You just want to make sure it doesn't go on too thick, or you start to lose some of the... Um, you'll paint it too much, you know? If you put it on too thick, you begin to paint as opposed to just shade. So now we're stepping into this wizard model too, and I wanted kind of a little more of a magical darkness look, so I went with a purple. I thought that might be a good color for like a wizard. So I don't have the um, the purple uh, citadel wash, I just haven't purchased it yet. I, so this is a mix, it's like a one-to-one -one mix of uh, Drakenoff Nightshade and Carabug Crimson. Uh, or Carabug Crimson. I've been saying that wrong for a long time. And I finally just read the bottle the other day and realized I'd been making a mistake. So I mixed this and then thinned it down, and I just thinned it with, um, I thinned these with water this time. They don't need extra flow improver because they've already, they've been mixed with a lot of that when they made the wash themselves. So we're just kind of getting this on there. The wizard doesn't have as many types of breaks as the rogue did. The rogue had like a lot of armor pieces and whatnot, so it set in there a lot better. The wizard was a lot more subtle. It had a lot of like flowing fabric and um, minor things like seams on the fabric and uh, trim kind of going around. 
So I ended up just coming through after I put the initial down and doing like extra touch-ups with this fine brush so that I could just, it, this is just a liner, just a generic cheap liner from a local art store. And I kind of would reapply it in some of the areas where I wanted that extra detail to be seen. And this is like in the creases in the robes. And um, also something I forgot to mention earlier, when you're doing these reaper bones, you need to make sure you clean them first. The mold release they use when they make them, it actually repels the paint. So if you don't clean them, they'll uh, the paint will crack off when you're doing normal bones. For these to clean them, you just take and uh, wash them in warm water with uh, some like dish soap. And I just take an old toothbrush and I just give them a scrub. The Reaper bones will come sometimes a little bent. Um, that's easy to remedy though. You can do it with a hair dryer. Just keep heat on a little bit and have some running water nearby and then just hit them with the cold running water and hold that in place and you alternate and it'll straighten out I actually had to straighten out the tip of the wizard's staff so now that they're dry um, you can see all that extra detail that's been brought out they still have that semi translucent look and they still kind of look invisible I mean all this has done is just give them a little extra tint or character so now I'm just gonna be putting these on some bases that I've done recently um, when I was doing these, I may have mentioned that I had some models in mind, and these are them. So I just wanted some quick bases to do for these clear models, these invisible ones, and um, just kind of give them a little extra character, a little extra space. I really like how that like steampunk urban one turned out, though. I will probably be doing more of that in the future, because they just, that rust pattern and stuff, I really, really liked. So I'm just trying to figure out how I want this to sit. Do I want him facing the pipes or facing these little storage containers? Um, also, where can I actually get him to sit? So when I'm gluing these down, I'm just using a little bit of glue and I'm keeping it in the middle of the model. Since they still have those clear bases on them, I can't pin them and I don't want a gob of glue to frost up. So that way, ideally, when you look at it, you can still see what's below the, uh, the clear base. This was just another test model I did so you could see another different color and how it would turn out. Um, you know, this one was done with the Seraphim Sepia. And you can pretty much do this with whatever color wash you want. Um, so, you know, you can do blues and greens and yellows and anything will help pick out that detail, just depending on what kind of darkness you want. I went with blue here because I wanted more of like in the shadows and, you know, the purple was a little more magical. And, you know, honestly, that's going to pretty much do it for these guys. Nice, short, sweet and simple. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them below and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so. And as always, until next time. Happy painting.